Hello everybody and welcome to the Criterion Connection. I'm Scott. And I'm Joe. And as you can see, I am not Wade, uh, even though I teleported uh, out of Joe's body or teleported, we switched spots. I don't know what exactly we did. We, I apparently did it with Wade. We, no. we proved that we're not the same person because we're in the same room at the same time. But in a way, aren't we all the same? But speaking of the same, you and I watched the same movie, yeah. which was 1933's The Testament of Dr. Mabusa. Yep. A uh, classic Fritz Lang movie yeah. uh, from 1933. Uh, I was also pleasantly surprised. This was a talkie. Yeah. I, I was ready for it to be silent, especially at the beginning, because there's no dialogue. Right. There's a lot of, a uh, lot of, you know, over, not overacting, overacting by today's standards, uh, yeah. but, you know... Just acting so, by those standards. Yeah, that comes with the expressionistic uh, style that, that they're coming and kind of developing at this point. Um, so, like, set dressings, the, the title card, like, that all comes from that period. And the overacting is stemming from the theater acting that kind of prevailed in, like, the silent era. Right. Everybody had to kind of be a little over the top so you can understand what's happening. Right, and this is definitely a transition movie, not mm -hmm. just for cinema as a whole, but for Fritz Lang himself. I can't say that mm -hmm. this is his first, you know, talking movie. I believe it's his second. But, yeah. well, there you go. Um, I was going to say, but you can definitely tell that, like, some pieces of that era are still alive and well. Uh, honestly, for this movie, for the, uh, the betterment of this movie, mm -hmm. I think, um, this... I was actually really surprised. I didn't know what kind of movie to expect mm -hmm. when I went into it, just off the title and even the description. <laughs> like, even with the description, like, I didn't yeah. expect it to be as complex as it is. And again, you're in a whole new era with, mm -hmm. you know, you know, talking and movies. Like, nowadays that sounds like a dumb thing to say, but mm -hmm. back then that was a big deal. Yeah. And so you're putting, like, a lot, you're really t telling three different stories at one time. Because you're telling the story of, uh, I forget his name off the top of my head, but uh, the guy who works for, who's working for Dr. Mabusa, who doesn't want to kill anybody, mm -hmm. and like he's trying, he's basically trying to get his life in order. You have that, you have the police department, mm -hmm. and then and then you also have like the goings on with Dr. Mabusa himself, who uh, according to a uh, doctor, he's telling, he's teaching a class, and he's talking about how... Uh, after his last, you know, his last uh, caper or whatever yeah. you want to call it. Crime. Um, his last crime. There we go. Um, he kind of went into this catatonic state where he all he can do is sit up. Yeah. And eventually he got to a point where, you know, he, he could move his arm a little. So they thought, you know, what the hell? Give him a pen and some paper and, you know, see what happens. And it starts with scribbles. You know, he just scribbles. Then he starts kind of relearning the alphabet a little, then it becomes meaningless words, and then he finally starts writing basically his crime manifesto. Yep. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm blanking on what he called it. I think, did they call it the crime wave or like the crime? It was like, as you're reading it, like he oh. had this big name for it because it was this overarching, like oh. this grandiose It was a big idea. plan. Yeah, it was a big plan. That it was like, because he had multiple steps, and it's like you do this, and then you do this, and you do right? This. Um, and so, and so, while he's catatonic, somehow the, the things he's writing on these pieces of paper are actually coming to fruition. Mm -hmm. And so, the police are trying to figure out how this is happening. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you've got the other guy who's, as I said, he's he he's with that group that's carrying it out but he's he doesn't because really, they there's a scene that i really liked it was very small but it really i really liked it there's a moment where it's like you got all the guys like all the goons yeah and they're talking about how you know he might have you know you're going to have to kill somebody there's just no two ways about it. someone's got to die and he refuses he's like I'm, i don't want to do that i don't kill and the guy kind of looks at him like, oh, you're, you know, you're, you're too scared. That's why you won't do it. He's like, no, I've killed people before. And that's why I'm not doing it. Yeah. And it's like that right there show is like the beginning of that arc mm -hmm. with him. Yeah. And you realize that like, you know, even you kind of feel bad for him. Cause it's like, he's, he's, he's a criminal by necessity mm -hmm. because of his past crimes it's hard for him to find work. That's yeah. where he meets uh, Lily. His I remember Lily. Um, he meets her and she kind of helps. She helps him out a little bit at the beginning with 
of his, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Trying to go straight. Yes. There we go. Going legit. And so over time, like they develop a relationship and he's trying to, he's trying to make it official. He's trying Mm -hmm. to ask her out. And that's kind of part of that story Mm -hmm. with him. And of course, you know how things go. The good gets intertwined with the bad and havoc ensues. Yeah. Fritz, Fritz Lang does, this is a tremendous effort on storytelling and telling such a interconnected weaving story with all of these plot lines going on and making it super interesting that you you keep watching you keep following what's going on because like the the kind of idea where like Mabuza is writing his crime plans and these people are carrying them out to the letter and then we figure out who it was near the end and how that all intertwines with each other is is really complicated. It's almost like what Tarantino tries to do. Um, and it's really one like I just Fritz Lang's just such a master right <laughs> of this and what and then on top of it the either purposeful I think there's a little disagreement on how purposeful it was but either purposeful or incidental like allegory of this coinciding with Hitler's rise to power oh oh in my research it's no coincidence yeah. it's no theory it's it, it is he is Fritz Lang is hitting you over the face with it and you don't even realize it. yeah and it's so good you know the man behind the curtain you know giving out orders and these guys going and carrying them out it's like it's you know, it, it like it's it seems obvious, but the the great story is uh, so this coincides with Hitler's rise to power, and Goebbels becomes the minister of like propaganda and stuff, right. and Fritz Lang's meeting when he gets summoned by by the SS is an incredible story. It's 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 from an interview Fritz Lang did with. Uh, William Friedkin, um, where William Friedkin asks him about it, and and the story Fritz Lang tells is enough for a movie itself about him being summoned, meeting Goebbels, and having what's said to him said to him, because Fritz Lang is Jewish for those who don't know, and they wanted him to run the propaganda department. Because how good, how good of a filmmaker he was, and think about that, guys. Yeah, think he, about that. And the Testament of Doctor Mabuza is the movie that Hitler saw, and was like, "That guy's super talented." And he's like, "So what's going to happen?" He's like, "Oh, that movie's banned, but we're here to talk about you becoming the minister of like propaganda." And not only did it get banned, <laughs> it didn't get unbanned till like what the sixties. I saw way later. Like yeah. I, I think it was like the sixties or seventies. It finally got to be like widely released. And this movie and that meeting is what makes Fritz Lang leave Germany, escape Germany to France, and then fly to America and continue his film career. Shout out to Fritz Lang, man. It's not overly complex. It's not... I like to call it simplistic complexity. Mm-hmm. Where it's not... It's it's more about, like, so much stuff intertwining rather than trying to, like, overdo it or have too many things at once. Right. It's a great balancing act yeah. that I think he na- absolutely nails. He nails it in M is another movie that we've talked about. And, and I, like, I, I definitely feel like this movie, like, if you want to get into, like, not just Fritz Lang's movies, but, like, movies of that time, Mm -hmm. German or otherwise, this is a great jumping off point. Yeah. If, if this is what you're into, or this is what you're thinking about, this is a great, great introduction. You know, two hours, it's, it's a little longer than your average movie, but not Mm -hmm. too long. There's enough stuff going on that keeps Mm -hmm. you interested. And not just a lot of stuff, but a lot of stuff done well Mm -hmm. that keeps you interested and keeps you wanting to know where we're going until the very end. Yeah. And I don't want to spoil the end, but let me tell you, whatever you think is going on, you might be wrong. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's, it's really great. And him and another director that's not represented enough uh, of that time period is F.W. Murnau, uh, famous for Nosferatu. Love me some Murnau, man. Um, they're both tremendous filmmakers at that time. Ger- Germany was pumping out great stuff in the 20s and 30s. Fritz Lang is probably the top of the heap 
but there's other countless great films that came out around that period um and this is certainly one of them i really like it's taken me a long time to get to this one uh, a lot longer than i expected or wanted well it's not your fault the first movie in the series is like what 10 days long <laughs> it's four it's only four hours but, but still what i mean is uh, we haven't like i haven't gotten to watch this one yet and i and i i love a lot of fritz lang stuff so it's taken me a while to get here and i'm you know it's worth the wait it's it's really it's really good uh not to spoil my decision on what what we're about to ask right. scott would you recommend this movie <sighs> hmm. this it's a very interesting hmm. thought in my head because on the one hand yes mm -hmm. i would recommend it however it's from a, a time and a place that isn't for everyone nowadays yep um, I'll still say yes. Mm -hmm. I will say if this is a genre you're interested in, like fully, or are looking to get interested in, like actively looking to get interested in, or to, you know, see more of, yes, 100%. If you're just curious, but you're not quite sure, try it. It's, you know, the worst thing you can do is not be interested and turn it off. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I don't think you'll be unhappy that you watched it. Mm -hmm. It just may not hold you like someone who actively seeks, like, films of this era and, or is into that kind of stuff. Yeah, this is definitely, like, that's what makes a lot of these reviews very complicated. Is that, you know, we have movies like this period or, like, silent movies. That sometimes it just feels like that trends of the time just wouldn't jive with a modern day watcher but i think if you keep an open mind i think this is one of the better ones of that period to to jump into it's you know got an interesting plot that's not overly bogged down with that time period or that country for that matter or so that if you're country. not german like there's nothing about this that feels yeah. too german there's a french version that fritz lang also directed um, that was made simultaneously, but I think this is a good one. I would recommend it. Um, cause I, I found that a lot of like that silent era, the pacing can be really slow for some people. Like how I feel about Nosferatu, you know, it's like, I think this kind of drags at certain per periods, but I think Fritz Lang really has pacing down and, and it can keep with a modern sensibility. And I always... Like, this would be one of those ones I could say, like, try this out. And if you like that, start looking at all the other ones. Right. Um, because it, it really is. It's it's a fantastic, you know, near masterpiece-like film. And if you like the, the whole idea of Dr. Mabusa and everything, there are other ones. Again, there's mm -hmm. Mabusa the Gambler. If you can handle a four-hour silent movie... Uh, mo a lot of places, if you find it streaming, have it broken up into two parts, which is a lot more tolerable. Yeah. Uh, and then there's like two other official ones. So it is a franchise. You, one could argue one of the earliest examples of a film franchise. Yeah. One of the early ones. Yeah. Um, definitely an early example of, a, of an actual like film sequel, like a, like, cause this one picks up mm -hmm. where the right other after one leaves the off. So you could argue cause yeah, you had the universal movies, but they didn't really they connect. They weren't out yet. Well, not just that, but I'm, no, but you could argue they were the first real franchise because mm -hmm. the other two didn't come out till much later. Right. Um, but I think a lot of people would say, well, what about those movies? And it's like, yeah, but they're not like super directly connected. There's a mm -hmm. lot of loose ends. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't actually add up when you, when you watch them back to back. But this one to me is like an early, if not the earliest example of a actual connecting sequel. Yeah, and especially when it's Mabuza the Gambler, directed by Fritz Lang. Yes. And then Testament of Dr. Mabuza, directed by Fritz Lang. <laughs> it's and you, like, you can't get any better than that. And you get to see them in both elements, silent and speaking. Mm -hmm. So that's going to do it for this episode of the Criterion Connection. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. And, uh, you know, don't forget, comment down below. Let us know other movies you want to recommend, Criterion or otherwise. Um, you know... Tell us what you thought about Dr. Mabusa, this one. If you saw The Gambler, Dr. Mabusa, let us know in the comments also. Uh, and also, as always, support Meteor King, meteorking.bandcamp.com. All righty. Uh, I'm still Joe. And, and I'm Scott. We'll see you later. <laughs> uh.
I know it's getting cut out. 